Cameras Always. Are on. Yeah. Cameras are on. We're good. Okay. All righty. Here we go. This is our second podcast so far. Uh, we have the one and only Peter Baum on here. Joey Heichel. Joey Heichel. Hello. Hello. The man, the myth, the legend. The one and only. <laughs> Often imitated, never duplicated. duplicated. That's right. <laughs> so, man, what got you started into racing? Shoot, honestly, back in the day, no. I, I get asked this a lot, you know, like, what got started? What? How did I become a racer? And I never really like did junior dragsters or none of that. My parents never raced. Nothing. Kind of back when I was a kid, I just wanted to go-kart you know like a little off-road go-kart five horsepower and <laughs> rode that thing around the neighborhood and you know honestly it evolved from there and just started tinkering with it engines you know fixing lawn mowers and that's how a lot of people get started yeah you know, yeah there's no one else to, to teach them or whatever no i mean there really wasn't anything just crazy your interest yep and then there was a local go-kart place, you know, like you often see nowadays where they had a league, so to say, nothing like crazy, but they had a little league where it was on Sunday nights and I was the little kid that went out there and raced with all the adults. And Were you winning back then too? I, I did win quite a bit, and a lot of the adults were complaining that it was because I was a lot smaller. Because go karts, yeah. you know, the big thing is weight. Right. You know, an adult sized person is obviously a lot heavier than a 10 year old kid. And I ended up getting second, but it, that's kind of, you know, where my so race kind of lit your fire. Yeah, yeah. And then, I yeah, mean, high school and everything. Yeah, high school. I obviously, my dad bought my first car, which was a 88 Fox body convertible. So it's always been Mustangs. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And honestly, you know, a lot of people have this big, long list of cars they've owned. Yeah, not me. I've probably owned like five cars. Really? That's it. I mean, aside from, well, if you don't consider daily drivers, I've definitely only owned two. Wow. So I have my 88 convertible Mustang. That was my first car that I have. And that thing just spiraled from, you know, was under it a, drive Was it a pulleys. small block Ford or? Oh yeah, 302. 302, <laughs> you know, turbo kit. Yeah, I, well, first it was a Vortec supercharger and then it spiraled to a turbo. And now it has God's motor. Turbo LS, <laughs> and it, I, I it makes uh, God's engine. <laughs> yeah, it makes pretty good power. Uh, it made like 850 on a Mustang Dyno, and it's stock 4.8. And I think I saw a video of that thing uh, yeah. a few years ago. Yep, Kyle did a car cash small. Days. Yeah, yeah, it, it's been like best of a 590 at the racetrack, so nothing like right. crazy, but still enough. No cage, nothing like stock interior. I mean, really basic right. safety items, I'll say. But yeah, that thing kind of sits quite a bit. And then I graduated from high school and drove that 88 Mustang throughout high school. And as it got a little bit more race car-ish, I had a daily driver that I drove. Yeah. And that is the Beater Bomb. <laughs> no and way. so I drove that as a four-cylinder for... Didn't you say you used Several. to pull your jet skis around? Yeah, oh, yeah. Yeah, I I had a lot of toys when I was in the 18 to 25 yeah, age. In the and party phase. Yeah. <laughs> had jet skis, four-wheelers, and yeah, I mean, I, I didn't have a truck, so right. put a hitch on the... That's probably when I first started, you know, watching. Yeah. It was with the Beater Bomb when it oh, was yeah. LS. Yep. It was nitrous, and there was, you know, you were hanging four foot flames <laughs> underneath of it yeah. racing on the highway you'd race literally anything right right Bikes, we would, cars that was the first time i met ryan mitchell uh, down, down in kansas city because you know i live in omaha nebraska and boy nothing is from omaha nebraska except 1320 video and <laughs> i mean you know i i probably got pretty lucky living in omaha because you know kyle is probably one of the first people that that I can thank to 
start your success of yeah. being quote unquote famous, yeah. you know, cause obviously, I mean, there was not, YouTube was pretty small back then, right. you know, and in the, it wasn't what it is now. No, you know, no, it it's crazy. 10% of the channels there are. Now. Yeah. Yeah. So everybody knows about the video of the beater bomb race and the bikes down center street is what street that was in Omaha. And, Everybody talks about that race, and that was actually it's really funny. Garrett Mitchell, Cletus McFarland, filmed that really? when he worked for Kyle in his stock ish Subaru <laughs> and everything. Yeah, he was it's there. Crazy how things just evolve. It is wild because yeah, Garrett used to live. Back. Garrett used to live in Omaha too. Yeah, when he was growing up, and so yeah, that's it's crazy how. Everybody from Omaha is, you know, it's a small world. Right. It's a small world. But yeah, that's how the beater bomb came to be, came to be. Bought it as a daily driver, four cylinder. Where'd the name come from? Beater bomb. Oh yeah, that that's a good one. The the name beater bomb actually got coined before it was even modified. Really? Like it's you know, kind of a junker, I guess, mm -hmm. and just it's a beater. And then one day, I mean, names of cars, they don't, you can't think of them out of the, out of the blue. They just yeah, come to you. Yeah, yep. And yeah, it, the beater bomb name just kind of came one day and it stuck. It stuck. It's obviously pretty, pretty well known now. And you know, the, like Billy was saying, the car evolved from, it was an NALS. And even back then, when I did the NALS, people didn't know it was an LS. Really? They, no way. they didn't even know. Because I remember our buddy Blaine, he's like, is that a small block? Small block Ford, you know, being a Ford Mustang. Yeah. That was back when nobody put LSs in Mustangs. So it was very new. I mean, nobody around really had one. Especially in my area, there was no other ones. It was like you and then Skinny's pretty much. Yes, yes. So, I mean, it was not as common as it is now, right. you know, but... Uh, every other one. Oh, gosh. If there's, not more. <laughs> yeah. There is literally, for every Fox Body Mustang at the racetrack, 9 out of 10 are LS Mustangs, you know. And it's, it's really, a really block. nice power plant to... <laughs> race back of the track stuff you know now that yeah. everybody has gotten so you know involved in the stock aluminum mm -hmm. lc9s or whatever you want to have it and it's it's the people's engine yeah you know I mean? it's crazy it's crazy For yeah really cheap you can put one in a fox and really cheap. Be competitive like halfway I mean, competitive like i said my 88 convertible it's got a stock 4.8 and it makes 850 horsepower i mean <laughs> for eight yeah not, not you know 850 horsepower for a stock motor that's unheard of yeah. you know up till today's technology and you know it's it's pretty cool for sure i mean what's the next best engine gonna be you know it's gonna be hard to top the ls game yeah i think the godzilla is on its way up you know there's yeah. a lot more manufacturers you know, making parts for it now. Oh yeah. Yeah. And I think Ford actually came out with their crate race engine. I don't remember if it was, they had some weird Godzilla name behind it, but yeah, yeah they actually sell the crate engine now with performance heads and an intake on it, like Ford racing and stuff. But yeah, it, it'll be really cool to see if it'll keep up with an LS, you know, cause, yeah. and it's just hard to unlock that, you know, and, It'll be curious. It'll be curious to see and how it evolves and moves from there. Yeah. So you were saying, you know, even back when it was NALS, people didn't know what it was. Where did all this secretism, like what drove that to make it such a secret? Just for fun, just to keep people guessing? Like just recently you finally posted pictures under the hood of the beater bomb now. Yeah. So yeah. what drove that to make you keep it a secret? Like. You yeah, guys, like messing with people. Or? Honestly, I don't remember where it started, but yeah, I mean, it basically was a thing where people always wanted to know what it was, and then it was like, well, I'm not gonna tell you, and then it just <laughs> evolved, and yeah. 
became this pretty big ordeal. I mean, I don't know if you guys have footage of at the Ozark race where I knew we were going to have to get after it pretty hard at Ozark from where I have been. And I'm a big firm believer in reading plugs and you guys would see us pull it in the trailer and mm -hmm. take the hood yeah, off, check plugs the and there. yeah. And yeah, it, it, it was a pretty big deal and I was definitely die hard grudge racer, yeah. or, you know, whatever you want to call it. And it was mainly just a game and mm -hmm. you know, now, uh, we made some changes and it was kind of getting more of an annoyance. I mean, if you're familiar with engines and sounds, you knew what it was. Yeah. yeah. And it, it really wasn't a secret. And, you know, it kind of got to an annoyance thing where I used to be a big a-hole. I don't know if we can cuss on here. But <laughs> no, you can't. I used to be a big asshole about <laughs> just anything and everything. Where, you know, and I would push buttons of people and I just get ahead. decided to become a bigger person and not kind of be that guy anymore. I want to be the humble guy at the racetrack that everybody likes, even though I'm there to win, obviously. And the first time I met you, you helped me because we were in yeah. Kansas City. And I came up to you and I was like, hey, man, I've been watching you since I was in high school. <laughs> yeah. And I was like, what any advice you give me? And you're like, do you have a draggy? I was like, what the <laughs> fuck is a draggy? <laughs> what is a draggy? Oh, yeah. And then that was the first time I ever heard of a draggy. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, and so I just don't want to be that kind of asshole of a guy at the racetrack that everybody hates. I want to be the guy, you know, I have kids now and I want people to look up to me and you know be a good example to the younger generation and yeah you know i don't want to be that and asshole grudge racer it. and stuff yeah and so I, it just came became an annoyance kind of thing of hiding the engine so i did post on my social media that if i got you know i think it was like maybe 200 more likes or something that yeah. i'd show but honestly behind that i was going to show anyway it was yeah. just a small little game thing that gave people interest to hey watch the beater bomb facebook page and i'm gonna reveal you know what it, either you knew i had or you are blown away by what i have you know and obviously it's a very simple big block combo and twin turbo can't go wrong no i mean it obviously can make a lot of power as you know with the nova you okay. know and whether on a small tire we use all that power definitely not you know but like tommy has said in some videos you know a big block mm -hmm. combo is not the best on the worst surfaces yeah, it can you be know a challenge sometimes. yeah but i do that's where the butthurt bar comes yeah, in yeah <laughs> yeah i do try to be the best with the same combination everywhere i go and, and I do feel like I've proved that to a point, you know. Sure, am I not the very number one guy at prep racing? No. But am I top one, two, or three everywhere I go? I do feel so, you know. And Do you feel a lot of pressure being that there's this expectation that you're always going to win? <laughs> do you feel uh, any more you know, pressure than... Somewhat, person? for sure. I mean, people definitely expect me to win when I show up. I mean... If you want to get down to the nitty gritty, over the past three years, I have a 77% chance of winning when the whole up. event. Like over the last year, I won 27 out of 33 races. That's and cool. I we mean, we thought we were doing something with our whole camp winning 14. Oh, between both cars. Oh, God. <laughs> yeah. No, and then this year, I've won 18 out of 22, I think, or 24, maybe. And Obviously, this year I had, I, my kids are starting to grow up a little older, and I have another kid on the way in March. I didn't know that. Yeah, wow. so. Congrats. Congrats I, man. Thank you. And so, I've obviously slowed down on traveling as far, but I've tried to hit races around me a lot more, and that's why we go back to having such a versatile car. Right. Like, I have to be able to be good at 
junk or prep or no prep or whatever because I need to be able to hit every race that's around me, you know, roughly three to five hours away. Any more than five hours away, my kids can't come because sitting in the car for that long when you're a young kid is not fun at all. Does that make it tough? Like, I know a lot of guys just went to mega cash days. Yeah. And, uh, you know, we weren't able to go. We didn't have everything ready in time. But yeah. Why did you elect not to go? Yeah, uh, I was definitely invited to mega cash days, you know, having a well-known car like that. But I look at the bigger picture than just being on TV. You know, as you and I sit, we both got to our point in this life without being on TV. 100%. So do we need TV? Probably yeah. not. I think both of us take a little bit of pride in that. Yeah. That we didn't need yeah. it. And so, you know, I am a single income household. My wife watches kids. That's what she does. And, you know, I can't do what I do without her, obviously. But that means somebody still has to go to work. And unfortunately, the mega cash days thing is a cool opportunity for sure. But I literally just spent three or four weeks in Vegas at the prior filming. Yeah. And... I just didn't feel like I got out what I wanted in that. And had the mega cash days thing came about this prior or this next year, once one, one of those big things a year is probably okay for me, but Mm -hmm. doing one, one month or two months after the other, I just can't. Yeah. For one. It's tough to be gone for three weeks. Yeah. For one, my company can't be without me for that long again. I, I, build elevators for a living and those buildings, you know, rely on us to have those elevators built by a certain time. And we unfortunately got pretty far behind when I was gone for those four weeks and we just couldn't just do it again. Could I afford being gone for another four weeks? Yeah. But at the same point, no, I mean, I rely on my career to fund my racing and traveling and, Stuff like that, you know. You, I never go to a race knowing I'm gonna win. You, you can't do that. Like, no. you can't race that way or nothing like that. So, you gotta stay you, on your toes. Yeah, you, you have to be able to. You have to be able to afford to travel to the race and back home without winning. You know, and yeah. stuff like that. And there's been times where I really didn't have, <laughs> didn't have the money if I didn't win. Yeah, that's. That's a pretty bad way to look at things, but... When I was younger. Yeah, I mean, that's that's the way we live when we're young, you know, wild and crazy. But that's okay, you know. Everybody's got different paths, and... Yeah. Yeah, the Mega Cash Days thing probably looked pretty cool and felt a little bad that it didn't show up, but being as it was in California, like, that is just insane. And the dollars didn't make sense. That's the way I look at things. I am 100% in this to make money. Unfortunately, that's probably a bad thing to say, but... Hey, that's, that's the truth. That's yeah, the truth. I 100% am in this to make money, and traveling 25 hours away to California to win without winning the whole thing, if you won two or three rounds, you wouldn't even be able to pay for your diesel, yep. and that ain't... That's kind of where, where we were weighing yeah. our options and... You know, I mean, it ain't. It, it wasn't, wasn't worth, worth it to rushing. me. No, no, not Anything. at all. I had a lot bigger risk of other things, you know, with my career and stuff like that than winning five grand, you know. And as you guys saw, I went to, I traveled to a race in Texas for one weekend and won the same amount of money, and I didn't have to take any days off yeah. of work. So yeah, we've had we've had weekends like that. Too. Yeah, I mean, it's. It didn't make sense. That's why I didn't go. And I really wish I would have known about the Mega Cash Days thing before, before the team the team race thing. Because I'm not a big team player. I mean, yeah, I'll be here to help whoever if they need it. But I feel like I put in a lot of hard work in my program. And it's kind of disappointing when others do not. And, and you're you down with them. Yeah. That's, so I'm, I'm the same like, way. That was muted. It's okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's like you put in all the hard work to get some of your data 
mm-hmm. and somebody else that didn't. And then you know, you, wants you, to share it. You yeah. found out. Let's say you you found out <laughs> something that took you a long time to figure out. Right. And then somebody comes along and you know they think you know it's no big deal. Like you know just help me out. And yeah. That team stuff gets tricky. I see a lot of teams break up over time. Over yeah. That stuff. Yeah. I mean, we we all agreed from the get go that we were splitting the money evenly, and I feel like that was the most fair deal. You know, so that gave the chance of everybody needed to help everybody, and I definitely helped everybody to the fullest that I could, and yeah, uh, you know, it, it plays out how it plays out, and like I said, I really wish I would have just did the mega cash days thing from the get go, and but maybe they'll do another one in the future, and I'll be mm-hmm. able to. Well, from what I've heard, everything is going to small tire now. Yeah. Other than no prep kings, so yeah. If they plan to continue street outlaws, then it's all going to be small tire. Yeah. How do you think that's going to affect some of the back end of the track and some of the other no prep races? Honestly, I don't think it's going to affect them at all. I mean, they're so busy filming. Yeah. It, if you do have an event during that time of filming, I do think it's going to hurt your event for sure. Yeah. And the bad thing about TV that I learned is that. They don't give a shit about anybody. Yeah. I mean, like you saw, they, they filmed over Thanksgiving the and out in California. You right. have, no one lives near California except a handful of people. Right. And, you know, and they could have at least picked a central. I was hoping. I think if it was in Texas or Oklahoma, I probably would have went. Yep. I, I do agree that if it was a lot closer, I probably would have thought more about it. But as soon as they told me it was in California, I knew I wasn't going. Yeah. I mean, it's just... That's a hole. Yeah. And it just... Yeah. It was just so far away. Vegas is was still very far away for me. You know, it's 20, 20 hours, I think it was. And it was still very far away. And, you know, we were there for 20-some days. And that's a lot of time away from my kids and right. you know stuff like that life i i like very normalized life i like i like going to work throughout the week and then you know like a just set schedule yeah i i'm a very set scheduled kind of guy you know and it is what it is though you know yeah. opportunities come and go and i'm just going to work hard at building my image without tv i guess until another opportunity comes up I think at some point, the guys that have been doing it for a really long time and haven't been on the show as much, it's going to be more more rare to see them on camera. Yeah. So it brings about other opportunities too for YouTube or Yeah, yeah. You media. do see a lot of them doing YouTube in their spare time too now. And <clears throat> the, I do envy the guys that get paid to show up because, man, it must be nice to get paid not to win. But <laughs> I mean, you know, there's a lot less stress on you yeah. to win. Yeah, that's for sure. Yeah, I mean, it I, seems like some of them don't even care if they lose anymore. Exactly. Like you're just showing up to be a face, and I made fun of Swanstrom and Bird Birdman doing that, you know. And obviously, you saw Swanstrom shows up and loses first round, but Birdman actually did pretty good. I don't know if these are spoilers, but. That'd be all right. It is what it is. <laughs> Come at me, bro. <laughs> I, think, I mean, there's been videos. Yeah. Around and, yeah. Um, no, I, I, I was very impressed by the outcome of the big tire, big tire cars switching to small tires. You know, quite a few of them you'll see did pretty good. You know, and I, I was extremely impressed. You know, because you don't think that a strut front end car tube chassis car with zero travel is going to do very well on a worse surface but i do think you give somebody enough passes they're going to figure it out those guys are smart like they the really are smart enough, they can make the yeah. pass right and make yep. it work yep they don't need the travel like you and i with heavy cars to move the weight you know and right. stuff like that get the crankshaft up in there yeah i mean i definitely use it to my advantage that's for sure but your motor's not even moved back or anything no no if I, I when we built the car i've had that combination for three years now and when we built it i definitely wanted to retain stock firewall stock suspension and you know nowadays do you feel like that's the go I don't know. 
Yeah, I don't know either. either. I don't know how, where small tire is going. Uh, half the races I go to, there's no rules but the tire. Yeah. And you see people out there, you know, Ryan Mitchell, he's got legit 11-inch motor moved back, you know? Yeah. And am I missing out by not cutting my firewall out? I don't know. But then if I race on the front side of a track, I got to hang 80 pounds on the nose anyway. So right. it's yeah. tough. It's like a balancing act. Yeah. You know, you get to a good surface and you're like, is it going to hurt me more than help me? Right. That's what I'm saying. It's really, it's much more challenging to have a car that does good everywhere than having one that is the top of the food chain in one spot, you know? That's what we found too. Yeah. It's. Rather it's just hard. Have one car set up for one thing and one set up for another. <laughs> yeah. The Falcon is like really good at doing everything, but it's not the best at one thing. And right. That, that can be damaging. Yeah. It's nice to have a, you know, like I'm building my S10 and it's going to be for front sides. Then we can dedicate the Falcon to back sides. So. Yeah. Because yeah. what really needs to happen is we need to move some bars around and do all <laughs> kinds of crazy stuff and go to front side. But then the next day, we need to just return it all back. Yeah. It just doesn't make yeah. any sense. Yeah, some promoter needs to do like a triathlon, <laughs> radial prep, no prep, and back of the track. That'd be interesting. That would be yeah, really fun. Insurance. Same car, same setup. I think I'd do pretty good. I think so too. <laughs> but I mean, that's that's what I shoot for, you know. I try to just have a really good car for How everywhere I go. How many passes do you think you have on that car? Well, I, I average about 100 a year, so... I mean, I've had the car for since I was 18, but that I didn't build it when I was 18. So I don't know, 500 to 1,000 maybe. I don't know. Is that a, is that including test passes, like 100 a year? Well, uh, so I obviously use my draggy every pass I make, no matter what. I mean, I to a T. You don't forget it like never. I do sometimes. <laughs> I maybe forget it once, maybe. And let's see how many I have this year. But yeah, I. Do you think the draggies ever hurt you? No, it's helped. Why would it ever hurt you? More some down, people, it, it really does hurt. Like so I've talked to some people. I think people get psyched out over what somebody else is going and mm -hmm. comparing draggies. Mm. When they, some people lie about what they're going. Oh well, yeah. I mean, unless you use it to yourself, I'm at a hundred and eight this year. Wow. So it's pretty good amount. About a hundred a year. I mean, and that's with test passes and mm -hmm. stuff. And honestly, I don't test a whole lot anymore. I yeah. mean, I have a very detailed logbook in my computer of separated books for the streets or backtrack, whatever, and track, you know, of yeah. every race I go to, every pass I make, how is the car set up, what's the instant center, how much weight do I have, where is the weight, is it on the bar, is it on the bumper, is it... You can get something close for first round. Oh yeah, based oh, on yeah. all your yeah your logbook writing. Yo yeah, and so until I run into a problem such as not here making excuses, but when we went to Ozark, when we were racing you, you guys saw I kept wheeling, yeah. and honestly, I didn't change a whole lot, but I must have been right on the edge of wheeling in or not and then i moved some weight back a cunt hair back a little bit you can edit that out no, it's all right. <laughs> we don't care. back a we don't little care. bit and then it just wheelies out of control yep and so that was after that we went to vegas and did the street outlaws thing because i had to race that and when i got back i made probably several i did a Friday and Saturday deal at my track of just testing. And I ended up having to add 80 pounds on the nose to get it back to where I was. Wow. That's and a lot. just by moving some weight back three inches, it got upset. You know, I moved yeah. my turbos back three inches and I, I don't know why it was the tipping point. You switched those oilless turbos. Yep. And it just made it upset. So, the only time I ever go test is when I run into a problem like that where mm -hmm. the data is not something. making sense. Mm -hmm. Like, yeah. hey, this tune-up is supposed to go down. I've made this tune-up several times, but why is it wheeling out of control, you know? Right. And We really don't test 
uh, the Falcon a lot either, just because yeah. we've got We're so much data. Boat. Yeah, you you have data, you know what it does with X tune up on certain surface. Why and you just put more laps on. Yeah, seat. I just feel like. If I test at my track and I go to your track to race, it's not the same anyway. And I know my tune-up's already pretty close, so yeah. you got several forms of traction control to help me. So I, I think what sucks is like we're in that same boat where we don't feel like we need to test as much, but lately it's like it's getting for some reason harder to find uh, right off the trailer races like just like Mega Cash days. It's not off the trailer. It really sucks. Yeah, I want to use that. All that hard work to our advantage that we have all that data but it just seems like people that don't go out and put in the work they yeah get a car they borrow a car and then they go out there <laughs> and they're able to make four or five passes yeah. before the yes or whatever. yes that's... more power to them it's just it sucks for you know some of those guys cars are faster and that's the advantage is just we just know our car better oh yeah but they're making a tv show at the end of the day yep and they Their flat horses, out they... said that if one car goes down and the other car spins the tires that's not good tv yeah. so they have to allow testing so it makes good racing yeah because no, obviously close racing is good racing yeah, yeah. at the end know? of the day it's a tv show that's yeah what a lot of people fail to understand i hate it but yes that's the honest to god truth you know it's t there's tv shows out there and then there's the real world and i don't know if i belong in the tv land yeah. i'm just such a if the rules are this they're this but at the tv world they could be this 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 you don't even know yeah it depends how well the tv show is doing <laughs> right you know because <laughs> yes the rules changed quite a bit when we were in vegas and i mean that's just like a kick in the shorts to me i feel like like i show up prepared to be this you know and yeah. when it trailer. deviates from that it's pretty annoying and I know if I show up to a street race, I know what the rules are. I know it's off the trailer. Sure, does the locals test there maybe all week? Probably, but I mean, that's that's the challenge. I mean, if you show up to somebody else's road and you kick their butt, who's who's the better racer, you know? Yeah. So I definitely showed it countless times. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's it's challenging, but yeah, it's it's a lot of hard work and like Tommy said, just having data data is so powerful you know and i can't believe you've made it as far as you have in the truck <laughs> yeah, <laughs> without yeah. like having it's data all, on it's your laptop saved here yeah and no, on the GoPro, you know, right here. yes that's a dash. That's but still cool. you can't see little yeah i don't know maybe you're can't way better you got used <laughs> to it but Having data on the laptop, as you saw when you guys bought the Falcon, was just the game phenomenal. Changer. We didn't know what we were missing. Any theory you yeah. had could be proven or disproven yeah. at that point. Like, hey, did I pedal it or, yeah. you know. He I do that shit all the time, yep. man. Well, he'll be in a wheelie and it'll come down and it'll get loose a little bit. I said, do you pedal right there? No, I never pedaled. <laughs> like, okay, well, in my I head, I was sixty percent right here. I yeah. it, but yeah, yep. I don't know. sometimes you just barely come like, off of it. You know? Data doesn't lie. It lost, yeah. say it lost ten pounds of boost right there. Yeah, and I didn't get it back for point five or point point yeah. eight or whatever. I mean, just think of the diagnosing ability you have with the sensors right in front of you. Hey, was, did I lose oil pressure? I don't know. Like, right, but the data will tell me. Right. That's just basic that's, things. I am probably the worst driver, and that's why I have so many sensors on my car, like shock sensors. I have a steering angle sensor, and I wouldn't say you're the worst driver. I've seen you do some crazy well, stuff. Well, as I'm saying, like if I made a pass, did I pedal it? I don't know. I don't even remember. Like yeah. it's just I, a blur. It's yeah. Me and him are different in that way. He can remember every single thing, but for yeah. some reason, like. I can't. I can't remember if I pedaled or not. Like in my head, I'm like, I was yeah full throttle the whole pass. But yeah. You, you make a rip and then you get in the laptop and you're like, okay, this is what happened. Yeah. Sometimes my body will drive different from my brain. Exactly. Body. Because my body, my brain might be like, don't fucking lift, don't fucking lift. <laughs> but my body knows its limits sometimes. Yeah. You know, if I'm doing something stupid, I'm gonna lift, and that's yep. how I just drive, I guess. But yeah, but I don't remember that personally, like. 
during a pass, did I did I turn the steering wheel? Why did why did I drive towards the center? Mm-hmm. I don't know. So that's why I rely on all these sensors and you got sensors for your steering, right? Yeah. So you can see how much yeah. steering input you're using. Yeah. During a pass. It, it really helps you dial in the chassis to go straight because a straight car is going to be the fastest because like Tommy said, if it gets, I wonder little, at what point somebody's going to put an RC car gyro in one of the oh, cars. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's possible. It is possible. <laughs> But yeah, I mean, I have tire temp, track temp. Those are pretty normal oh, now. But yeah, yeah the, the steering angle sensor is probably something not a lot of people have or do or know about. But it's it's pretty beneficial for sure. I mean, we, we race on a lot of sketchy surfaces or sporty tracks, as I would call them. And, you know, sometimes you make a move to the center and you're curious, did, did I hit a bump or... Did I do that? You know, and you can see it in the shock, and then you can see it in the steering. Yeah, yeah, and I mean, I don't have a air actuated parachute yet, but some people could actuate that with the Holly if you steered too right. far or stuff like that. You know, that's where it could come the G-meter in. G meter or whatever. Yeah, anything to trigger your parachute if you needed it and stuff like that. But I need to put that on your car. <laughs> where you're not trying to reach for it. I get super uncomfortable having to, you know, reach having for the my parachute. hand up here for the last 200 feet of the pass. I can't do it. Like, oh, I, I'm not the type where I hold my hand there. The whole pass. Like, I'm I'm on the steering wheel, and as soon as I get to the end of the track, I throw the parachute and put my hand back. Yeah. On. Some yeah. people I teach don't sit it, there and hold it. Yeah. Like some people are ready, like in case the car gets upset, which right. I understand. If car gets upset and you pull the chute, and it can save a car. Yeah. But yep. I feel like. I'm going to end up crashing with my hand up here. I watch some people, they come off the trans brake and go right to it. I, I do see that a lot of pro mod drivers do that, you know, just for, I guess, safety, you yeah. know. and Some people can do it. I just don't feel comfortable. Like everybody's that. got a different driving style. Yep. You know? Absolutely. Yep. Yep. And tuning style, too. <laughs> yeah. Like yep. We hardly ever use traction control. You and guys? I think we probably sh- should. The Falcon it. has it. It's a switch on the shifter. Never turn it on. Why not? Time. I just don't feel like we need to. And he's asked, you know, before he's like. The first time I used it was when I, when I was racing you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I turned it off after two seconds because yeah. I didn't want it to slow me down the rest of the run. Yeah. That's all it's going to do, usually. Yeah. I mean. I had what? some other circumstances <laughs> come into play, but it kept. Yes. I could see it kept it in check. Yeah. Until it got to that two seconds. Yeah. It, it like lit, just, and the oil come out. Right. And it that, was, just, it was it, gone. Once you ran over oil, nothing was stopping that, no matter yeah. what. <laughs> when you were watching that happen, what was going through your head? <laughs> you spin out? Were you like, thank God? Like, yeah. You I mean, it was. It could have been really bad. I that whole weekend was pretty crazy because I knew I had to go to Vegas the next weekend, but like I was talking earlier, I was trying to get after the car pretty hard, or I knew going into that race I needed to be pretty fast. You know, Brent Self's pretty fast car on the racetrack yeah. surface, and I've raced at Ozark several times, and I know how fast I've been, and I knew I needed to go a little faster and. I mean, so yeah, it's, it's a fast track. It was really hot though. Yeah. I had in the back of my head at both days, Friday and Saturday, like, Hey, let's not screw anything up because big opportunity was coming up the next weekend and I couldn't break anything or do anything bad. And so, yeah, I mean, it was kind of just crazy how life works, you know, and I don't know what to never, say yeah, about it. I've just, never seen you bump through the light. Never. Ever. Never have a staging issue. No, I know. It's, and then I've never wrecked before at the same time. Yeah. <laughs> For so, such a shitty situation, that was the best outcome. Yeah. yeah it literally. was very, very crazy for sure. And I couldn't believe when I got home and saw there wasn't a rod hanging out of the pan. Yeah. I was like, what, I know. what in the world? I, it's, it's just wild. It, it's just wild for sure. But, you know, obviously I'm glad we both go to race another day, you know, yeah. and I'm sure we'll do it again. I've raced this the beater bomb obviously for several years and I have only spun out once. I've never hit the wall or wrecked anything and I was sitting on the trains break for like twelve seconds at a racetrack that didn't have auto start back in the day and tranny line just melted and ran over my oil and spun out in the middle of the track, you know. Yeah. And a lot of times we get in this habit of thinking 
that it can't happen to us. And right. That's kind of how I was for the longest time. Yeah. Until it happened. And it just really, really humbles you. Yep. You know? Yeah, it that's why. anyone. I just don't want to be that asshole at the racetrack anymore. I want to <laughs> be the guy everybody likes, whether it's... I know it's hard to like somebody that just wins all the time or whatever, but like I like you said, I, I want to try to help people and... Yeah, you started up kind of a new thing, right? Yeah, You're helping yeah. You're people I, with tuning. I honestly got bored racing. I'm not going to lie. It's hard to say that, you know, winning's boring, but like... Helping other people win is yeah. even more rewarding to me. Yeah, I mean, it, it started to get to the point where I would go win a race. And you know how, like, you win against a very fast car or whatever, and you're screaming in the car? Yeah, I don't do that. Yeah, I rarely and ever do that. I just, until I beat Perry. Yeah, <laughs> see? and <laughs> That was the one I was, that was the, that was the biggest monkey on your back for yeah, three yeah. years. You beat me so many times. Yeah, and I just... I don't know. It just seemed like, ah, oh, this is pretty boring. Uh, won again, whatever. You know, yeah. ha- winning money is cool, yeah. But cause after you, a while, you almost come to expect it. Yeah, and then, so I got to the point where I'm like, man, I need to do something else. And I, I really like tuning. Like I, I love, I love tuning or just like deciphering data logs. Like I sit at home during the week after a race and just look at my data logs because. You don't have enough time to like look at everything in between rounds, no. and I just sit there and like stare at them, and it, it really allows you to find areas where you can do better. And you know, in my logbook, I take notes and put in there, you know, stuff like that. And I, I decided, you know, hey, I, w- I want to see other people do good too, you know, and make a little bit of money here and there, and. So yeah, I started this beater bomb tuning and support, you know, I figured I might as well put all my hard work into other people's programs, you know, and here and there I have been tuning other cars prior to this deal, but you know, I wanted to see if there was anybody else out there and maybe outside of your normal wheel. Yeah. Yeah. And I've obviously been pretty busy with it and even in the winter time, uh, I've been dyno tuning cars. I mean, some made 450 horsepower, but and do you do you know. just do Holly or do you do all kinds uh, of fuel tech? Hall Holly tech? fuel tech and Hall tech. So I've messed with Hall tech a little. Yeah, bit. it's really different from Holly. Yeah, I mean, it, it's not that bad. You know, different. they're all pretty much the same they're in my similar. opinion. You know, you don't have a favorite though. Oh, Holly is by far my favorite. I mean. Probably 10 to 1 for yeah. sure. I mean, wow. Holly, I feel like, is very programmable. But you have to be as smart as what you want to program. Like, I had a guy come up to me, one of the cars I tuned for. His wife floors it in the burnout. Literally just bah, 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 to the rev limiter. I tell you to do sometimes. And <laughs> he wanted it to have a rev limiter offset and a air shifter offset when a certain switch was triggered their burnout switch and you know so you have to be smart enough to tell the holly make a 2d table based on the burnout switch voltage this is the rev limiter offset or this is the zero rev limiter offset for when they're going down the racetrack and you know stuff like that's pretty cool to think of and stuff like you know the holly you just tell it what input and output and what it does. And I've watched uh, Brian. I was really impressed with him with his little uh, pecker extender that comes yes. out yeah. <laughs> midway down the track. Yeah. Probably triggered off his holly or something. Oh, yeah. Maybe off his shifter or yep. whatever. Yep. Know? And gosh, that, that we had a race at US 36 here a month or two ago where we raced in the finals. And he treed me on the tree by, I went in 04. 50 i think he went in 030 but i et to him by i think it was four numbers four hundreds Mm -hmm. but i got to the finish line first it looks like in the videos right but i think he tripped the beam with his bumper he didn't have the pecker thing out then but he had tripped the beams first and you know I flat out said, you know, we, we rely on the timing system and 
you live and die by it. You go by what it says, even though it looked like I was in front or maybe not, you know, depending on who was ever opinion, but yeah. the wind some light. Some timing systems are different. Too. Yeah. Some sensors are higher than others and tracks yeah. have different setups. So, but yeah, we were racing on 28th. So I had to use my, the extension to my advantage, you know, on the front and get the nose that's, in there and it trips it with the top yeah. instead. But if I had the front end lower, I wouldn't have ET'd as fast. I feel like, so, right. you know, I live and die by that, you know, the front end. So you it's gotta it make is, sure you beat him next time by more than a bump. Yeah. I got a tree <laughs> his ass. Say. That's what they say. Yep. So yeah, now me and Ryan go back and forth quite a bit, you know? And do you think if, if Ryan would have been in the scene, do you think you would be as fast as you are? Uh, I don't know, you know, we've, we definitely have raced quite a bit, but I do believe when you race fast people, you get faster because nothing drives you more to do better than losing by four hundredths like I did, you know, how can I do better next time or stuff like that, you know, but if you go out there and have the whole field covered by four tenths, you get in the position I am and it just gets boring. You, get you know, lazy so with sometimes. yeah, I mean, I'm glad for people out there like Ryan or even Kendall, you know, has pushed me to do better. And he used to kick my ass before, and now I feel like tables have turned. But you know, that's just how avenues go or racing programs. You know, Kendall strives to be really good at backtrack stuff, you know, and he ain't as fast at the racetrack, yeah, <laughs> but. It just is what it is. Yeah, we we definitely have a lot of people locally that push us to be better too. Yeah, yeah. You know, and it's, I I actually get excited when I see people going faster near us. Yeah. In our area. Yeah, it's it's definitely good, you know. And maybe my tuning thing will help people see, like, hey, they can compete because it's pretty sad around my area. Like the small tire numbers. Like I had a race earlier this year where I said i was not racing in it had 40 some cars show up yeah. to race for 10 grand and then the race where i didn't say i wasn't racing there was i don't know 16 or something but you yeah. know it's people do i don't care what anybody says people do run away from when i show up or where i say i'm racing you know and it's I've pretty it sad too yeah it's it sucks. I know? mean, and why I, don't... I've seen a lot of promoters, you know, they'll take advantage of that too. When they know a certain racer is going somewhere, they're like, yep. okay, well, I know all these smaller fish are going to go here. <laughs> yeah. You know? Yeah. I mean, I, I wish people saw it differently. Like, hey, you could, if we raced, you could see how close you are, you know, instead of I'm just going to lose, you know, but yeah. some people think Anything differently. Can yeah. Anything yeah. can happen. I mean, you beat me. Look. Whoa! <laughs> you could take that to your grave. At what cost? You, yeah, they gave, me, they gave me the little beater bomb thing yeah. and everything, the little trophy. Yeah, I looked at it and I was just like disgusted. Yep. <laughs> I'm like, yeah, this is the worst thing I've ever won. Hey. <laughs> yeah, this is not how I wanted to win this. I, I mean, it's it is what it is. We'll we'll get it race again and yeah, maybe you know. we'll race for it again. <laughs> Cool. give it back or something yeah yeah no one <laughs> whoever holds the bomb i know <laughs> that was I a know. cool trophy though i i think they plan to do another race next year you know yeah and maybe I love we'll Katie see and kevin yeah I, I i like the ozark track for sure it's really fast obviously and really smooth so it's nice to go fast for once i, I do like going fast i mean racing on shit surfaces ain't ain't as fun to me you it's know, fun. it's especially when you have a fast car, you know, that goes four fifties and you got to slow it down to five fifties. It's, it's kind of boring, but yeah. they take off know. so easy. And yeah. The power in. And it's just, <laughs> yeah. Know. It's cool. Like the first time I ever drove the Falcon and made a good hit on it. Yeah. Like the extension it has and the way it's, so it's smooth wild and it shifts right at the right time. <laughs> and it's just, do you find when you have to go somewhere that's pretty bad? Is it not challenging for you? Oh, anymore? man, it is super challenging. But the, that's not as fun, like, chasing that challenge as, as, you know, compared to just going and going fast? Or... Yeah, no, it's it's definitely, it's fun to have a challenge for sure. Mm -hmm. But 
it's a lot more fun to go to a fast road because exactly. I obviously have a lot of horsepower. Yeah. So I had a lot of fun testing at the Ozarks because yeah. that was the fastest I'd ever been at that time. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's fun going fast for sure. I felt like by the time the car shifted, I was like reaching for the parachute and at yeah. the finish line. It was yeah. just, it happened so fast. Right. I'm, I'm used to going, you know, a lot slower. Yep. In the truck. Yep. But I mean, you, you tailor yourself to tracks you race around and sometimes tracks are pretty sporty or surfaces are really bad. And, you know, it, 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 it like, for instance, the race I raced in Texas last month, it, the first road we went to was super bad. I mean, I didn't floor it to the end, but I went like a 650. Yeah. And I beat the other guy, but the, the road was that bad. And showing up to somebody else's town on their shit roads is very challenging for sure because you feel like they have all the data there. I mean, I guarantee you, if you show up to my town and go to the road I race on, ain't nobody beating me there. But I feel like that's how it should be. Like, yeah. I have literally hundred hits on the street yeah, every we race pass on. you're gonna get faster oh god I, i'll be faster than anybody's fastest pass off the trailer just because i know the road and nobody else does but that's the, the challenge little, of every little nook, yo god yeah bump. i mean literally five o's off the trailer and just and then i'm just gonna get faster from there but that that's the challenge of going to like your hometown and racing on your road is i gotta figure out that road but like Kansas City is pretty close to me. Once I go to their road and race on it once, and then every time I get to go there again, I, I've got data. So yeah. you're just gathering data for future, I guess. And if you show up and lose, it is what it is, you know. Losing just part of racing. You can't get discouraged if you lose, but yeah, I definitely have a lot of pressure to win for sure sometimes. I feel it too because I yeah. feel like I got a lot of fans. Oh you know, yeah, you that definitely support. Do. And if I don't win or if, if I go out early, <laughs> it, it weighs on me pretty bad. Yeah, because you know, cause, nah. you know, I try not to let the haters get to me. No, nah, definitely not. You know, I look at it look at it as they're they're making me money. Oh yeah, point. haters make you famous. That's for sure. You know, my trailer used to say "financed by my haters." I, yeah, I think I remember that. <laughs> so. Videos. Yeah, it's it's a true statement. I mean, they they can hate all they want, but they're the ones watching me, you know. I think I'd be more upset if I didn't have any haters. Yeah, because no, no one cared. No one cares. <laughs> no one. Not at all. Yeah, that's the that's the best thing about the butthurt bar. <laughs> Everybody hates that thing. Yeah. <laughs> but, you know, you just got to look past them and race your race. I mean losing part of it just see what you can do better and don't do it again <laughs> what do you what do you think like sets you apart from everybody else like what do you what made you get so much faster than everybody else like you have a mustang it's right. a big block it's got big turbos like yep this is not something that's pretty basic out of ordinary. You know, it wasn't always a big block though he did right play, no. you know, all different combos but this yep. is not something that nobody has ever seen no offense. right but what do you think is made you so much faster than everybody else ingenuity optimizing what i have for sure and like we talked before having data like and you've been in the same car so long yeah but you know changing combinations or turbos you know yeah. it, it changes everything and yeah i have been in the same car for well this chassis for three years you know and I don't know, hard work maybe is what sets me apart. I feel like some people, not you guys, maybe <laughs> you guys, park your car after a weekend and then put it in the trailer and go race again. A lot of people You know, that. you need to look it over, change spark plugs or, you know, or just, you know, maintenance items, I guess, you know, change the oil, take yeah. care of it. It's, it's trying to take care of you, take care of it, mm -hmm. and just look over data, you know, and like study. I talked earlier, I sit there and study my data logs from the prior race all week and try to find where I can do better and take notes, you know, having a logbook. Do you guys have a logbook? You started one, didn't yeah. you? Yeah. 
Yeah. So we have we have some notes. Yeah. Know, for shop I mean, settings and different bar angles like, and stuff. At the top of my logbook is obviously the date, what race, what the track, and how my car is set up. Like I have a couple different shocks or springs that I use based on if I'm going to use weight or not, you know, and and then launch RPM and boost. Yeah. Am I using timing retard? How long is the timing retard? Front shock setting, rear shock <laughs> setting, and bo overall boost ramp, you know, am I commanding, you know, five to 10 over three seconds or whatever, you know, yeah. and just basic data, you know, tire pressure, new tires just new <laughs> tires are really big all the details <clears throat> yeah. yeah definitely and having that data and a lot of things that are constant is going to help you do better at the next thing you know how many passes do you usually put on a set of hoosiers oh well seven or eight and we have overlaid time and time again at seven and eight it literally loses like a tenth in the 60 foot. Wow. wow. And I don't know why, honestly, is it because I'm just like using so much horsepower? I don't know. We haven't figured it out. Mickey Thompson did tell us that we're near the limit of their compound that we use, the the stiff wall. But, and, and several times during the year, we've like ripped the tread off the slick. Wow. And... They just said that we're kind of at the limit with the weight and speed that, and power, but I don't know. It is what it is. But yeah, seven to eight passes usually. And if you watch me and I sell you slicks, they're always at five because if you go to an event, you usually race five rounds, right? Well, that another five is more than seven and eight. So yeah, you don't want it to cost you a final. Nope. And it has almost a couple times. We got really lucky one time. I slowed down from like a 110, 60 foot to like a 140 and nearly got beat. And from then on, we were like, we're racing on new tires every time. Yeah. And I either save those ones with five passes on them or four passes on them for testing or just sell them. I mean, you literally buy a new set of tires for five or 600 bucks and you sell these ones for 300. But are you going to let that $300 difference cost you a $5,000 race? Probably not. Nope. So. Our biggest thing with the Falcon is it's so hard to get the tires off. That, yeah. is, painful. that <laughs> is a big deal. I did see that. Yeah, it's it's tough to get tires off the car. Yeah. We had, we Especially had like in between too. rounds. Like yeah. doing it yeah. after the weekend's over, that's one thing. And right. Ass, whatever, but. There's no, there's not enough time. No. Unless we had a lift it and a trailer or something. Half, half an hour. Yeah. 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 I did watch one of the videos of you guys changing <laughs> tires. Yeah. It's a pain. I, I do have three sets of wheels, but still, I mean, double bead locks are pretty hard to change tires between rounds and we definitely try not to, but at one of the last races, we, I went to Onondaga all the way in near Detroit where you guys raced once and our 60 foot knocked off by like half a 10th and uh and the tires were at six runs and i was telling justin i said hey we need to make three more to win this and we're already losing right now so we had a new set in the in the truck because i brought them in case and so we put them on and picked it back right right back up i i don't know why my car likes new tires i, I mean i hear a lot of people use tires further than we do but it's really hard to deny the data when we have take so good of notes to notice it time and time again, you know? Yeah. Cause I, I literally use the draggy every pass, like I said, and I record the time slip if I get a time slip too in my log book. So I have both of them right there and you can see it time and time again that we, it repeats. if we push it or get lazy, I guess you could say, and, I mean, chain of tires sucks. Yeah, I is. I don't like doing it, but those few times that we, we noticed do, it, we usually do fifteen to twenty. Yeah, ten to fifteen, about somewhere in there. Yeah, <clears throat> usually about fifteen. Yeah, and I mean, I I do believe new tires are extremely good for sure. I mean, 
even at a racetrack, you know, and if you're pushing the 60 foot and stuff, you know, new tires, they hold pretty good. And, and that's one less thing you got to worry about. Like, you know, for instance, if you go to a track and you enter three classes, you know, let's just say you guys triple enter, double enter, you know, and you came on a used set of tires, you're working pretty hard to get to the finals. And then you get to the finals and the tires are junk and you throw it all away, you know, just Pull not something details, you want to do. Yeah. And whoever wants to work harder. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. That's what I feel like sets me apart is hard work for sure. And now that I'm getting older and more relaxed, I definitely don't work as hard as I used to, you know, but like I said, I went to 33 races last year. Well, I'm only at 20 some this year, but it just is what it is. You know, maybe once my kids get older and they can sit in the car for longer than five hours, we can go 33 races again, you know, like I'm only 32, not as young as you guys, but yeah. we're still in our prime for sure compared to them old guys out there, you know, that are 50 some and doing what we're doing. I mean, the way I look at it is just imagine how fast we would be if we were 50. <laughs> and we stuck yeah. with it the whole time. Yeah. Yeah. That's, That's the what way I'm I look forward at to. It. <laughs> yeah. I mean, you'll be racing each other. Yeah. Going 390s. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> rockets strapped to the back of our right. cars and shit <laughs> right all right so we've been going for about an hour and uh i guess we'll start closing out a little bit i guess my last question would be uh one place you haven't raced that you'd like to race um i don't i really don't have anywhere that i like want to race at you know i Is there hear like a legendary street you've never been to no no i mean uh, it, you say legendary i mean i've been to quite a few streets around my area you know kansas city is what i would consider legendary in the yeah. street scene for sure and i mean i did go to this texas eagle R road or whatever for the first time last there. month and that, that place freak. yeah it's wild i mean it's it's pretty much the same as the road near me i mean we have a road very similar to it but you know it's like I said, you go to these roads and if one guy says that it's fast, that doesn't mean your car is going to be fast there. You don't know. Like, yeah. what's your fast? What's my fast? You know? But it is what it is. Yeah, I, I uh, haven't been to the pad, but do I want to go there? I don't know. Not really. <laughs> I mean, is it a cool road? Does it look like a cool road? Sure. If but, the money's right, maybe. Yeah, I mean, it's just... <laughs> It's really far away from where I'm at. It's like 17 hours. We just like going in the winter because it gets so damn cold. Yeah, like yeah. Like vacation. And I there. mean, I've got a couple races here in Texas coming up, but that's a nine-hour, 10-hour drive versus 17 is pretty far. Yeah. And what if you lose first round? I mean, right. I'd rather drive 10 hours and lose first round than 17. Especially, like I talked, you're going to a road that everybody else has data on but you what if i get you know john doe first round or something you know somebody yeah, really fast or something yeah like that. that is gonna go fast on that road because they know it that's their road you know but that's that's the risk we take i guess and yeah i don't i don't know if i'm gonna go to the deal coming up at the pad or not i mean it's right it's a long drive and illegal you know what if the cops yeah, hopefully they Break have a lot up. of backup spots. Yeah. Uh, or if they're even good. Or right. if the, they're shitty and got a turn at the end of the road, or you don't know. Yeah. So, no, not really any spots that I look forward to. Well, I appreciate you uh, coming on. Yeah. And hopefully you enjoy the rest of your PRI Oh, experience. yeah. Oh, yeah. So far, first day been pretty good. A lot of cool stuff at the show. I mean, it's been three years since we've come, so it's nice to come every couple of years. I, I don't recommend it every year, but, yeah. you know, it's it's pretty cool to come hang out and, you know, see people that you don't usually see throughout your racing season, but once or two, you know, and one or two races here and there. And, you know, we meet the companies that you talk to 
over the phone or right. Facebook and stuff like that. Put and faces to names. Yeah, yeah. And, you know, it's really nice hearing companies tell you, you know, they're really glad to be working with you and stuff like that, Definitely. you know. And you ask them how you can do better and yeah. they basically tell you, no, you're, you're doing great. And cool. I'm, I mean, it's, it's good to see companies face to face for sure. Yeah. I agree. You know, we've finally met with Brian Tooley. Yeah. That was really neat. Yeah. He's got a wealth of knowledge. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I mean, being in this industry, having that kind of part selection and stuff like that, you got to be a smart guy and all their Spintron stuff or whatever they do, you know, way above my knowledge. We're just the idiots that floor it. (laughs) That's it. Yeah. Yeah. Well, do you have any sponsors you'd like to shout out? Oh, shoot. I got lots of sponsors. You know, this <laughs> this racing thing, it's it's pretty tough financially, you know, traveling to racetracks and stuff like that. But uh, Chad Fegley from The Shop Inc., he's been with me from day one. I mean, ever since I started going out there and traveling and stuff, he's a local performance shop near me that... I use his dyno or welding or stuff like that and yeah. you know just anything and everything just an overall good guy he sponsors the events I put on and stuff like that um, Vasco Speed and Performance Brad Vasco he and I are who originally built the chassis in my car literally from the ground up cut the floor out built the cage I mean, I bent up all the bars. He welded them all, you know, is literally awesome. I'd make the bar, put it in there. He'd weld it up and we'd move on and on. It's a lot of work. You know, oh yeah. It was uh, three months of driving to Kansas City. He's from Kansas City. Three months of driving back and forth every weekend, three hours away. And it was a lot. I mean... My wife hated it, but I'm, <laughs> I'm safer now. way safer. I'm really glad we did it. And that was when we first did the big block combination. So, you know, all of that transformation into it and fab work, anything and everything Brad can do. I mean, I, I do feel like I have pushed him to do better, you know, try new things. He mounted my front end when I got it a long time ago. And I mean, just anything and everything. So... I've, I've definitely done a lot of work with Brad, you know, and he's been really good to me. Hell yeah. Um, Comp Turbo most recently, as everyone has seen now. The oilless turbos. The, I did uh, use their oilless air-cooled is what they call them, turbos. No oil, no water, and I was really skeptical at first. I'm not going to lie. Uh, Mork uses them and Rankin Relics car you know chris rang and he uses them and that i was very worried at first because i i don't like change like yeah. the turbos i had were working good but they they smoked a lot and right. man they were just couldn't get it not to smoke i mean literally puddles in the downpipe and yeah. i i'm really glad i tried them out you know that's one bad thing about being a proven car and setup is trying new things but you got to try new things to get faster and i'm really glad i did the turbos work great for me no smoke obviously you just squirt a couple pumps of grease in there every event five to ten runs you know and they've been great the power has been the exact same as before with my precisions and I'm really glad I did switch. Uh, we've got some new things in the works with them that I'm going to be trying out, but we'll see. I'm trying to get faster and always can't, can't be the same, you know, and just be stagnant, you know. Somebody's going to get faster, and i got to keep trying to get faster and faster, you know. And so I'm going to be trying some new things with them, and I've been really happy working with them. And... So they told me today that I've been sending them tons of business That's after awesome. releasing the underhood picture. So yeah. it's really Schoolboy good. Schoolboy uses those too. Uh, Schoolboy? Nick. Nick uh, yeah. Schoolboy Violet. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, honestly, 
I don't know why, but a lot of people give them a bad rep. And I don't know why, because they've been really good. I, I'm not going to, I'm going to be upfront and honest to anybody. Like the performance and the turbos have been really good. You know, there's nothing wrong that I've seen yet with them. And I've probably got 40 or 50 runs on these turbos now. And it's interesting. Show no signs of. You can mount them however you want. Any. Yeah. My, obviously, my turbos are pretty angled, you know, and. It, it just is ease of fabrication with the down pipes and stuff like that, having to mount them in any direction you want and Locker stuff. drains back to the pan or anything. Yeah, nothing. I gained a bunch of oil pressure back. You know, the turbos don't heat up your oil because essentially your oil-fed turbos are cooling the turbo, so yeah, the oil so gets hotter through. going back to the motor. So there, there's a lot of benefits going to the air-cooled ones, and I'm pretty happy with them so far. Um, otherwise, let's see who else is on there. Quick performance. Um, my buddy Justin hooked me up with Bryden there that owns that place. And we actually met, ha got to meet him face to face today Tom too. Just from there. Yeah, the they, they're really local to me. They're only a couple hours away, but they've been, uh, offering up a couple different ratios in the rear end to, try to get faster you know they're trying to help me improve too and you know sometimes you try a new ratio and it doesn't work out so you, know, you go back to the old but yeah i've been pretty thankful of them for you know offering up different gears to try to get faster and you know giving me stronger gears too you know they make up to a 10 inch gear you know and wow. so they're they're really strong um let's see who else is on the back window J and N grand right <laughs> yeah obviously justin's sitting over there yeah but uh like i said we talked about tires justin and baron racing they're working together and helping support the whole community with tires you know and having the availability of tires but he's a tire plug no just insane you name it he's got it and you know, you, you'll be looking out for his new venture coming out. He's going to be, you know, offering more than just tires here soon. Awesome. Right now he offers, you know, tires and fuel, but look for more stuff coming out soon. And, but yeah, Justin with Jane and Granite has helped me out a ton. You know, he cruised for me obviously too, you know, on the radio when Sean's not, a, n not able to come, you know, life gets a good in. Team. His, yeah. I Everybody, mean, you know, if some people just don't drive together. No, and I think, no, but yeah, that's a big part of it too. Yep. Yep. Justin's been a huge help to my program. We met shoot way back at Coffeeville, probably four, four years ago, I think, you know, uh, Mike Lau actually brought us together cause Mike Lau built his motor and my motor and, we met at Coffeeville and just been great ever since. We like Mike. Mike's yeah. Good guy. Oh yeah, yeah. No, Mike. Mike was a really good asset to my program. I think I was just a little too hard on him, as far as that was during the era when I just was blowing up motors left and right from sink loss problems, and I just yeah. was too too hard on him. You know, we we've tried to work together in the past again, and it. He's just a busy guy, but I really do like Mike as a person and he does excellent work. I mean, obviously, as you see, his work shows that, you know, oh, yeah. and he's just a busy guy and he, he, he knows his worth and for sure you, you just pay for his motors and you'll do good. I mean, that's just, <laughs> no doubt. He, he's set up pretty well. He knows he's got all these little secrets and I ran his, uh, one of his backup motors he sold me for the longest time after I just kept blowing up the built motors and <laughs> left and right. And, you know, he, he definitely helped me do better for sure. And I, I wish him the best for sure. Um, let's see who else is on the back window. Uh, Jordan with New Edge Automotive and Detailing. He, he's pretty local to me. He, Jordan Sharp, he races a blue Cobra, but has a detailing company that he just wanted to help support me get to and from races, you know, and get get his business out there. Um, garage built racing. You guys probably see a lot of Tyson yeah. Williams and Joseph Thomas. Yeah, Joseph Thomas. Boy, they are, 
There it is. In the comments of every post selling stuff. He is spamming literally every <laughs> post, but that's his job. That's I mean, good salesman. Yeah, that's good salesman. Hey, somebody's looking for a used set of tires. Joseph's in there. Hey, I got a new set if you need them. Yep. <laughs> Just literally everywhere. But yeah, uh, Tyson, he's pretty localish to me. He he uh, helped me out with a few carbon parts and stuff like that. We're trying to get lighter. I mean, um, just got to try to get faster and stuff. So Tyson's on there. Um, let's see. I got to look at a picture now. <laughs> You're going to have to edit this out. <laughs> it's all right. You can shout out your own Facebook and stuff. Whatever you got going on. <laughs> My Facebook venture? Is that what you're talking about? Yeah. Oh, so... Uh, T&D Rockers, Sheldon from T&D Rockers. He, uh, obviously, big blocks are really hard on valve train. And uh, I ran into a few problems last year just breaking stuff left and right. And he hooked me up with the uh, T&D Rockers and just been flawless all year i mean the competitors rockers just their cast wasn't as strong as these tnd ones and it shows i mean i i make a lot of passes a year you know 108 or so that's a lot for a big block car i guess you could say and i mean longevity is a big deal for guys that make lots of passes like us you know and yeah. You guys race every weekend. I try to, and we can't be having parts break. Valve, but valve train parts yeah. breaking is once you start doing that, it's oh, just it's bad. Yeah. So yeah, T and D Rocker Sheldon, he's been great to me. Uh, my rear end, as everybody saw in that underhood shot or under rear end shot from thirteen twenty videos, Marty Mary Marilat, you know he. I had an 8.8 actually behind the big block for a year and oh wow god I just broke rear ends like yeah. the gear set literally like seven passes eight passes especially if I shook the tires just it's done break literally like 10 teeth broke and I went through probably six gear sets that year and called Marty I said hey can you build me a rear end and, oh yeah and got his torque boxes and the rear end and Chew that thing is just artwork under there. Yeah, it's pretty really dirty, nice. but yeah, it's he's been a great help to me. You know, even just bouncing questions off him for instant center stuff and kind of just hey, should I try this or you know, stuff like that. He's been great help for you know, he wants to obviously see being a rear end company like that. He sees data from everywhere you know a lot of other cars too and you know if you're an in with that company he's gonna not tell you what car does what but he's gonna tell you hey this certain setup will do this you know and right. so he's not really like giving away your secrets or mine right. but he's still helping you you know That's showing awesome. you the way of trying to get better yeah. and stuff like that which hole you need to be in yeah, to do what I mean, and just try. I mean, he's probably see, got so many different people yeah, running those boxes. Exactly, exactly. So he's been a huge help to my program just as far as, you know, like I said, you go to a racetrack, you don't want anything to break. So you want to have some good shit up under there. And that it's just been flawless for me. And like I said, the quick performance gears they've been holding in. And, you know, Marty's rear end is just super solid. So... Okay. It does really well for sure. Otherwise, yeah, lastly, my new business venture, I guess <laughs> you could say, I don't know, of I'm just trying to help everybody's program, you know, your racing program do better with Beater Bomb tuning and support is the Facebook page. Um it's anything from like I've street tuned a car. What if we gotta race each other and I reach out? Yeah. <laughs> I I did yeah. say this before. You know the you know the best way to make me not win a race is just pay me to show up and help you. Because then I'm not racing. But no, I, I'm pretty selective on what race like 
you know, like if you and I were going to a race, I'd probably tell you, hey, I'm planning on racing, but yeah. we can do this <laughs> other day, yeah, stuff like that. Right. But yeah, I'm, I do anything from I've street tuned a truck, I've remote tuned a car, or even just you show up to the my area and we can dyno tune your car, you know, and the biggest thing that I am portraying is that I want to teach you how to be sufficient right. with your program instead of hey can you a bunch of shit leave. hey can you come tune my car and not show me anything you know i want to show you how to do the ropes you know yeah and stuff like that so that's as far as the tuning side or power management side you know we can show up and show up to some street race and i can show you how to power manage or how to make your car better and or we can start from the beginning and, hey, you're building a new car, you know, hey, what parts should I use or right. where should I get these parts or how big a turbo should I get? You know, just stuff like that. That's pretty you awesome. Know? That's that's pretty cool. That it's, that. I mean, like I said, I want to see other people do better and nothing is more disappointing than you putting, we'll just say 25, 50, 100 grand into a investment and you cheaping out on a thousand dollar investment of me helping you make it go fast you know you know Definitely. it's it sucks to put that money into a car and then just go out there and spin or get frustrated a lot of people aren't gearheads you know that they, they don't understand how to learn the basics i guess right. you know some people just want to go out there and floor it and there ain't nothing wrong with that you know <laughs> right but, you know, that's where... Don't expect to win all the time. Yeah, that's where I come into play. You know, I can help you figure things out. Shock settings, instant center, you know. I even offer you bringing the car to me and I'll set it up and scale it and set up the instant center for where you want to race or stuff like that. So... Looks like we'll be going to Nebraska. Here. <laughs> <laughs> that's that, you know. I, I have tried a lot of things throughout the years and you know that's probably where i've gotten so well at where i'm at is because i've tried millions of things that did not work but at the end of that tunnel are the things that do work and when you do find the things that do work it's awesome i mean obviously winning races is fun sometimes till you just do it <laughs> over and over and over but you know, I, I want to see other people win, too. When I'm, I get more satisfaction out of watching him win. Yeah. Like that's what I'm saying. Like, I'm on the starting line, and I have people trying to bet with me. Yep. And I know what, you know, I just put in the car. And like, <laughs> that's more As fun long as me. Tommy floors it. And as long as Tommy's <laughs> going to do his job. Yeah. Most of the time. Hit the light and do your best. Yeah. That's, that's what I'm saying, is there's a lot of satisfaction out of helping other people. And I think that's where I've come into the road, you know. I'm maybe gonna race less and less but seeing other people win is a lot of fun too i mean or seeing people reach their goals maybe winning ain't their goal but making it down the track yeah you know <laughs> some people just go out there and suck every time whether it's spinning yeah, you wonder or, if they like or if, if they're even trying yeah i mean like, did you learn anything from last week <laughs> right right so yeah that's about it well I appreciate you coming on, like I said. Yeah, man. Enjoy the rest of your PRI. Yeah, thank you. Hell yeah. That's a wrap. <laughs> <laughs>